Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be reviewing this new quad that I just built. It's called the HMBX4. It's by MultiRC, and I've already finished the build here, as you can see, obviously. Uh, but what I did was I took a bunch of high resolution photos during the build, and I will put those up on the screen as I talk about how I put this together. And so if you want a more detailed uh, view of what's inside the build here, uh, just pause the video at the various photos that are put on the screen and you'll get a closer look at what's going on. So this is a 100, I believe 180 millimeter size frame. Actually, yeah, it's a, a little bit over 180 millimeters. It's about 182 millimeters, motor to motor, and it's an X style frame. So from above here, you can see that this is an X style frame. So as the name implies, this, this frame is built for four inch propellers. And uh, they also sell uh, an HMB X5 and an X6, which obviously will be for 5 and 6 inch propellers with the same style here. The uh, thing that Multi RC is known for is their indestructible main plates here, which are made out of a uh, material called HDPE. And it's, uh, it is a little bit flex, but it's very hard. You have to really pull on it and push on it to get it to flex. But basically, these do not. Uh, break and crashes and if you do happen to experience a break and a crash they will replace these um, for life uh, as a lifetime warranty on these on these bottom plates here now the rest of the frame here uh, the top here is carbon fiber and you have uh, four standoffs here which I believe are aluminum I'm not hundred percent sure on that but they weren't that heavy um, so the uh, frame kit comes with the top plate uh, screws The, this side uh, camera plate here for holding the HS1177 in. Let me give you a closer look at that. And also, also put up a photo of, of that as well. It's right there. And it allows you to screw in the camera and adjust the camera angle. Um, obviously you get the main plate itself. And uh, this uh, battery strap here. And this uh, battery sort of uh, protector thing here is made out of, I think it's 3D printed TPU. Uh, it's, I don't believe this is included as part of the kit. I, I think it's as an, a separate accessory you have to buy. Uh, but since since I've elected to do a bottom battery mounting, uh, this is a really good way to protect uh, the, the the battery for when, for when you're landing. Uh, so you're not um, hitting any rocks and puncturing the battery by accident. This is a very solid. It's flexible, but very, very solid piece of uh, plastic here. Um, this frame does allow you to also do a top mounting as well for the battery. And if you like to do a top mounting, uh, they have this special adapter thing here for your XD60 connector that will actually go through the battery strap and that'll allow you to um, keep your XD60 connector uh, away from the props so they don't get cut by the props here. So this is a, when, when you have your battery up on top here, this will probably go somewhere around here. But since I'm not using the battery on top, I'm uh, not going to be using this particular piece. Now the top plate that they sent me is not the standard top plate. It is a, a it's called a Kleinstone mod, I believe. It's, uh, I'll put a link to it on the uh, description as to where this where this is on the site and the difference between this and the standard top plate is the standard top plate has a hole here for the antenna to come straight through but this one has like this um, sort of a space here in between the standoffs where this small uh, 3d printed antenna mount goes and the allows you to put your pigtail of your video transmitter through there and so that um, when you crash, uh, you don't rip off your SMA connector on your video transmitter. Now, as you can see, I'm not using a pigtail here. I elected to put the video transmitter straight through that hole there. Uh, I did have a pigtail, but it was the, the wrong kind. It was a right angled one. And also the uh, one I had was too long. So I just couldn't get it to fit inside here.
but as you can see uh, the, the video transmitter fits in just fine and this angle here this is a uh, TS 5823S 40 channel uh, 5.8 gigahertz 200 milliwatt video transmitter and my dip switches are very easily accessible so uh, it turned out it actually works out better this way uh, for me so the motors I'm using are these Emacs uh, MT 2204 2 2300 kV motors uh, they're pretty basic. Uh, they're the cooling motors. Um, they, I think these only run on 3S, but I've heard of other people using the, these on 4S and uh, these working just fine. The ESCs that I'm using are the DYS uh, 20 amp ESCs running the latest BL Heli uh, 14.6 I believe. I'm running uh, a special PDB here. It's from Ready to Fly Quads. It has a built-in LC filter as well as an uh, OSD pass-through feature, and um, this I built this particular quad with an OSD, which I put back here and it's tucked away very right there. And I'll put some uh, photos up here as to how this was laid out inside. And what I basically did was I, I put the motors and ESCs on first, and then I uh, I mounted the PDB and then I soldered the uh, mo the power wires to the ESC uh, to get everything in place, cut everything to the right length um, and everything looks very clean and I soldered some pins onto the PDB it has a, uh, because it has an LC filter, it has a pass through for the camera and the video transmitter and also an OSD pass through so uh, it's a pretty cool feature where I can just use basically uh, the servo, servo wire uh, connectors and just uh, plug those in as well as the uh, OSD and uh, it does take up a little bit of extra space and probably in a, a build this small I probably wouldn't do that again but uh, it, uh, it worked out pretty well and getting everything in this side of the uh, quad here where there's a little more space there's not as much space in the front of the flight controller here where the camera is in fact, I didn't put anything there except for the camera. The uh, flight controller I'm using is the X-Racer F303. It's a uh, flight controller from FPV model. And I did a, a little quick look video on that uh, earlier on my channel. You can uh, take a look at that video if you want to check it out. It has the uh, F3 um, processor in it, as well as 16 megabytes of black box uh, flash data and uh, has a bunch of other features that are pretty cool so um, I'm going to start be I'm going to actually start using this instead of the Nase 32 from now on it's a pretty good flight controller as you can see here I soldered my buzzer directly to the board here uh, with the positive going on the top and the negative going underneath and uh, it's in there pretty solid and doesn't look like it's going to hit it props or anything else uh, I, don't, and I think it's protected by the bottom plate from a crash, so I don't expect that this should be knocked off for any reason unless something should get in there uh, inadvertently and uh, and actually hit it, which is not doesn't look like it's going to be too too uh, too likely. Now the camera I'm using is the uh, standard Sony HS1177 camera, and that's what this particular uh, mount is made for. Now I thinking that probably like Runcam Swift or other similar cameras with, with the hole in the side to mount this will probably also work. I have the uh, top uh, connector here for the uh, video and uh, power so uh, you probably want this style of connector so that it's not going to be uh, smashed in, underneath here. Now interestingly uh, Basically, it's just uh, two strips of uh, carbon on each side, and uh, there are notches or tabs that go into these holes. And uh, when you get look at the um, these, when you look at these pieces of carbon fiber, the tabs are shorter on the ones that go into the top plate versus the ones that go into the bottom plate. And uh, there's there's a um, uh, corresponding holes for the tabs in the bottom as well. And this actually was somewhat challenging getting this to fit all together as a jigsaw puzzle but and I had to sand down or file down the edges of the tabs to get them to fit into the carbon fiber 
top plate. But once everything fit in, it, it fits like a glove and uh, it's very tight fitting and it holds this camera very securely. So I think it's a pretty good design. And it, it's just, uh, it's amazing, it's just that one strip only. Now, they also gave me these uh, antenna tubes for my, um, say, Freescar X, X4R SB receiver. And it's got the very long antenna leads that go all the way up this way. So these antenna mounts include, obviously, the tubes, this little cap here, and these little 3D printed uh, mounted, uh, sorry, these, these, these 3D printed plastic pieces here that actually go around the metal standoff here. And there's one on the other side. Let's give you guys a look like that. Now, I don't think these are included in the kit as well. I believe it's an additional cost for that. Um, but if you're building this with a, a free sky receiver, I'd recommend getting this because uh, mounting these antennas safely can be uh, somewhat challenging in these smaller builds. Now in the uh, the back here, I have uh, these four programmable LEDs, and so that's one of the nice features about using the um, uh, X Racer F303 flight controller with the F3 processor. You have additional UARTs, so you can do S bus, uh, do an OSD, and do um, uh, your programmable LEDs all together uh, without having to do any like really like soft serials or anything weird like you have to do in the nays there too which can be kind of challenging and uh i'll do another separate video on how i program these and these uh, basically have the indicator lights that will indicate my going left or right or what what mode i'm in and i'll do a separate video on how i did that and also how i configured it in clean fights not that not that difficult but it's a it's pretty cool when you turn this on it uh, lights up and it it flashes and it changes colors and it's pretty neat overall. I, I like it a lot. Now there's already a lot of videos on the internet that talk about how to configure and set up your minimum OSD here. And this is a, uh, I'm using uh, MW OSD version 1.6 on here. It's fairly straightforward. It just it just connects to UR3, I believe, or I'm sorry, UR2 for the um, transmit and receive and just uh, also for five volts and ground uh, you just have to uh, do the programming uh, flash the firmware and configure it in the in the uh, the GUI configurator for MWOSD and then once you do that I have this connected via uh, these pins here and also uh, there's a video in and video out cable here uh, that goes to the PDB for the OSD pass-through. So the basically the camera connects to the PDB and then the video goes from the PDB to the OSD and then the OSD sends the video back out to the PDB and the PDB then sends the video out to the video transmitter. Um, it sounds kind of complicated, but it's actually not. I, I wired up this so that the the video in and video out for the OSD is soldered directly to the minimum OSD and also so soldered directly to the PDB and then I have these um, servo type uh, connector here for the four uh, wires that go to the flight controller for receive transmit uh, 5 volts on ground. Anyway guys that's my quick build review of the HMB X4 I haven't really flown this yet, I haven't had time, but I did do a quick test hover uh, for a brief, just a couple minutes just to make sure everything's working okay. I have uh, Betaflight uh, 281 flashed on here, and it's uh, very smooth, uh, it does require a lot of minor, some minor adjustments to the PIDs, but I will uh, get this tuned and get some flight video in a future video, and also I will uh, publish my um, PIDs once I get this uh, dialed in correctly. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this particular build and uh, if, I, if I missed anything or if I um, uh, forgot to cover something. I, I'm pretty sure I covered everything. If not, let me know and I uh, hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.